This event, held at Locker Room in Taipei, is just one of the many fabulous drag queen shows taking place on a Saturday night in the city. <laughs> <laughs> Through wearing makeup and dancing, we are expressing ourselves in our life experiences. That's what I would say to someone who doesn't understand drag. Chiang Wei made their debut in 2018 after being inspired by RuPaul's Drag Race and is now one of Taipei's most well known queens. <laughs> I think the name Chiang Wei really suits me because roses are such beautiful flowers and they smell nice. But also, roses have thorns, so give off a dangerous and mysterious vibe. As well as becoming a hub for drag queens, Taipei also holds the biggest Pride event in East Asia every year, with the 2023 edition set to take place at the end of October. We often see drag queens participating in the Pride Parade, and there are even drag performances. Through the event, we hope to promote the understanding of drag culture in society. Another hub for the LGBTQ community in Taipei is the Red House area in Ximending. One of the bars, Café de Lida, has been a safe space for queens since it opened in 2006. The queens here are so charming. One time I saw an old lady. She was standing outside and looking at the queens in disdain. But in the end, she burst out laughing because deep down, she actually enjoyed watching. Alvin, the owner of the bar, has been nurturing the drag scene since its arrival in Taiwan a few decades ago and has been instrumental in the transformation of the once small underground community. I started looking out for local drag queens. I would go to dance competitions and scout out those who were good performers and ask them if they would be interested in doing drag. The queen scene in Taipei has developed into a tight-knit community. I help my daughters however I can, by teaching them to put makeup on and helping them scout out performing opportunities. They are like diamonds that haven't yet been polished. Taiwan legalized same-sex marriage in 2019, the first country to do so in Asia, despite protests from some conservative groups. Although it is often described as one of the most open-minded parts of Asia, in some aspects, there is still a lot of work to do. Most Taiwanese people don't value drag queens, so we need to do more work introducing people to the performances and the culture so that there will be more demand and larger audiences. Taiwan legalizing same-sex marriage definitely had a role in drag queens receiving attention and becoming more accepted. But I am also not sure if the progress we have achieved could reverse when a new president is elected. And sometimes the pressure doesn't come from wider society, but from closer to home. When I first did drag, my family members, especially my dad, were really against it. He would throw my things away and tell me that what I was doing was not normal. But then after seeing how well I was doing, he started to support me and even helped me buy closets and props. Both my parents have passed away, but they both pretended for their entire lives that they didn't know I was gay, especially my mom. <laughs> there is also some divergence of opinion in the scene about the place of drag queens in society. There's a mainstream club in Xingyi that has invited drag queens to perform. I think that introducing more people to drag culture is good. But some people think this is objectifying the queens because they're acting like clowns to entertain straight people. As awareness of drag queens and the LGBTQ community more generally increases, many hope that society will become more accepting. But for now, the work to challenge harmful gender stereotypes continues. Femininity should not be a reason that people are bullied. I think drag queens can help more people see that men can be feminine and that women can be masculine. CNA Taipei